provide more now. <laughs> Coach, um, scrimmage, talk about the quarterback situation. Yeah, well, Matt Shills has been running with the number one group, and uh, going into camp, he was in the number one position. He, he's probably increased that lead as we've gone along. And, uh, and I thought he looked good tonight. So, you know, if we had to play a game this weekend, Matt Shills would be our starter. And, uh, you know, we're not ready to announce it and say that he's going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, but if he keeps playing the way he is, it's certainly tracking in that direction. Also locally, uh, dropping, moving up with the second team offense. Now talk about that a little bit. He, he's really improved a lot. And I've said this before, wide receiver is probably the position of greatest depth on the team. You know, but it's still important that we develop these younger players because there's injuries. We have a lot of seniors that are playing. And he has improved so much from last year to this year. Just understanding game, the, the game of football, playing more physical, uh, learning the offense, his ball skills, you know, taking a catch and getting up the field. It's, it's been really encouraging to see him get better. And if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to end up being a very good football player. You know, how much opportunity he gets this year, I'm not sure, just because it, it's a position that we do have some older depth at. Uh, but he's got a very bright future here if he keeps doing what he's doing. You mentioned before that Shills has put on the weight, and he mm -hmm. seems to have adapted to doing things and can see more. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? I mean, he seems to be growing every day then in your eyes. He does, and he, he worked really hard in the summer. And, you know, he's every at the end of every spring ball, we meet with every single player in the program. We have a meeting, you know, one-on-one -on -one with me, their position coach and the coordinator, and say, these are the things we need you to do to play at the level we need you to play at. And some guys do one of the three things, some do two, some don't do any, and some do every single one. And he's done everything we, we've asked. He's put on weight, and it's been good weight. Uh, his execution and knowledge of the offense is right now by far the, the best uh, in our program. And, uh, and he, he's been a lot more accurate throwing the football, that a lot of the balls, not only they complete, but they're complete on the right shoulder or on the front number, which allows us to get yards after the catch. So. It's, it's exciting. Uh, I'm encouraged by it, but we still, you know, he still does not have the timing that a quarterback that's been here three years has. And, and we, we can't get enough reps and enough work, and we're going to continue to just push these guys and work hard and get better at it. Is there a, a number two? That's really where the battle is. I mean, it's really right now a three way battle for number two between Aaron Pankratz, uh, Kellen Pagel, and, and Trent Hurley. Um, Pankratz has had a very good camp. Uh, Kellen, again, is very physically gifted. And Trent Hurley has been very impressive. He's picked up the offense extremely quick. He's got a live arm. And I, I've really been impressed with his maturity and his presence. So uh, it's really the battle right now is more for number two than number one. One thing we couldn't help but notice was seeing Jeter without the helmet. I mean, was that was just a matter of um, not wanting to get him banged up because he's definitely a starter. It, it was, if we had a game today, he could have played. Um, you know, but he, he just, you know, he, he tweaked something the other day. And, and really, our big search here is who's our number two tailback. Um, so again, if tonight was Troy, really Jeter would have played and would have played 60 snaps and he'd have been fine. Uh, but again, he's played a lot of football. I didn't see a need to, to bang him. Uh, we need to make sure he's healthy for Troy. And the battle for the number two tailback position right now between Eric Ivory, Jordan Hopkins, and John Pettigrew is one of the most competitive battles uh, going on. And we wanted to give those guys a ton of reps and see what they did. See, right boom to 49 yard field goal that way, too. That yeah. brought a little smile to your face. Yeah, it was, I mean, he, he's got a very strong, strong leg, and, and he's going to help us. And, you know, he's competing for all three jobs. and. I mean, he, he could end up do, handling all three for us. And again, it's too early in camp to start naming starters. You know, you, you got to let the competition continue because I think it's the competition that drives guys to be better. Uh, but, but he certainly is, is in the thick of all three of those, and you know, who knows how it's going to play out. But yeah, that's exciting to see us hit a, and, and just not only that he hit the field goal, but the height on the ball and how it got up. You know, that gets you excited because we had some kicks blocked last year right. with, with low kicks. Good to see that after you punted those other two back towards the uh, stands. Yeah, if you notice, um, and that's an adjustment for him, that uh, we, do, we sometimes run a little bit of a rollout punt. 
and he has not done that a lot. And those were the two he shanked. And then the third one, he, he boomed like a, it must have been a 60 yarder. So oh, yeah. it's it's certainly not a lack of leg strength. It's uh, you know it's more just doing something he hasn't done before. And obviously, when we see that in the scrimmage, that we know we've got to work more on that with him. Uh, offensive, defensively, anything that you know that sticks out in your mind. I mean, on offense, I think it was just a lot of little procedural things. Um, you know, the one time we thought it was a, a fourth down, it was a first, and the operation of substitution and getting the playoff was slow. And that's where, when you have a senior quarterback, they can fix the problem for you. When you have a freshman quarterback, it took, took them a while to even realize it was a problem. And those are all things that you just got to expose them to for them to get better. Um, and, and I told the team, you, when you take when you take it from practice to a scrimmage, it changes and the level goes up. And then the level from a scrimmage to a game is a completely different jump. And, and we just, we've just we got to make practices and scrimmages as game-like as we can because we have a lot of inexperienced guys. And we've got to treat situations in practice and scrimmages like a game. And, and we learned some very valuable lessons with that today. But the great thing is it was scrimmage one, and, and we've got time to fix it. How about defensive one? Um, we just got. We need to eliminate big plays, um, and, and that was a little bit of our story last year. Is that we'd be three and out and three and out, and then we'd give up a big one. And I think it happened in the scrimmage today again. That we gave up a, a double move early. Um, you know, and you can always say, well, geez, if you eliminated four or five plays, you played well. But that's part of playing defense. Is you don't have those four or five plays. And, and the other thing is, you know, we need guys to step up and make critical plays at critical times. You know, no great defense has come from everybody just doing their job. At some point, somebody gets off a block or makes a critical sack on a third down or, you know, handles a receiver one-on-one -on -one in the third down, makes a break on the ball and knocks it down. And we have guys that are capable of playing at a higher level and they need to elevate their game. And that's, I said that afterwards, that we have guys that are capable of being all-conference players here, but they got to start playing like it. You know, they need to do their job, but at some point they got to get it off a block, make a play, and get us off the field. And, and that's what didn't happen tonight.